is running so quiet. I keep looking back at it like, hmm, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> it's never run that quiet before. In fact, we come over to this one, and uh, this one makes quite a bit of racket compared to this one. So, so far, that motor's doing a great job. I've not spent a whole lot of time out here in the shop, but I thought I'd come out today trying to knock a couple things out. Maybe you can see the shadow there. That's one thing that I need to take care of. It's kind of hard to keep the heat in with uh, breaches in the siding like that. So I've got everything insulated all the way around to here including up here so this springs plan is all this is going to get closed in just like the rest of the loft is there and then I'll insulate up there I did, well, the doors are insulated but that's about it and then uh, I'll go around and I'll insulate the rest of all this but you guys can see I've definitely got my work cut out for me because I have a lot of stuff at, on the walls that will have to uh, get relocated temporarily in order for me to go through all that. So that's going to be a pretty arduous, ta arduous task. Now, this side I may not worry about because this, uh, the siding, and then uh, this is all plywood all along here, all the way down. So I may not worry about this wall, but, and this lower half here is also covered, but I will do up here, and then all the way over here. So this wall isn't near as bad, even though it may look like it. This wall's not as bad as this wall over here, but um, definitely got to get this closed in this spring. One. Uh, air condition it in the spring, in summer, in early fall, and obviously I heat it. So heating it will be ever so much easier and more efficient, cost efficient, uh, if I just close the rest of that in. And then the staircase will be over here and it'll just be essentially a ladder just going right up. Um, Pretty sure it'll be on that side. We'll see. One side or the other, and then it'll have a trap door. And the trap door will be at a 45, and I'll just flip it open. That'll give me a good wide open space to get up in there. Uh, anyway, like I say, that's the plan. That's the hopes for it. But that'll mean a whole lot of relocating, but. Uh, told you guys that I had cleaned the loft up and I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off set the ladder up and we'll uh, go up there and show you what's going on I've got tons of room up there so anyway uh, stay tuned I'll be right back we're finally up in the loft I know I've talked about it a couple times but we're finally up here this whole area here will get closed in Here's that silly long wood ladder goes all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way to underneath these boxes. And it ends right there. So it is a uh, 40 foot extension ladder. Heavy! Had to take it down to put the rain cap on the. Uh, house flew but anyway step back over here and you'll see I've got heavy sheeting here all the way up to the old uh, fence row <coughs> wood and when I started out that was the only loft was just that little bit right there and it stopped right here so then this is OSB here there's a beam runs across there, there's another beam runs across here and then this beam here no I'm sorry, that's it, just two beams you see where it comes out, there's a beam there and then that beam right there 
and I have pulled engines using this beam. Big engines in vehicles and does real well. But just got a little bit stacked over here, old Harley parts, uh, spare buckets, just a few spare engine parts, a couple of chainsaws up here. Here's the uh, older, here's the other Wayne pump that I told you guys I had and that was from the first Farm King and this one uh, will actually run anything you throw at it and it's a good pump everything's fine with it I need to get a new nozzle other than the nozzle it's ready to go so let me right down to the line that goes into the fuel tank so this pump head uh, may end up getting put back into service if one of the others downstairs takes a powder. But this thing gave me years of good service long before I got it. And I said I didn't remember where I'd gotten it, and then I finally did remember. Uh, it, oh Lord, it was well over 15. No, just about right at 15 years ago um, in Pendleton, Indiana, uh, a hog farm. This was used to um, keep the pigs warm. So it ran 24-7 through the winter months, constantly running. Uh, See, it's got a, this one's actually got a fuel filter, I mean a re replaceable fuel filter on it. It's a um, high pressure pump, just like the other two downstairs, they run 100 PSI. Uh, this one, like I say, will inject number one, number two, diesel. And I even ran a uh, filtered waste oil motor through this one as well. But we'll see what happens with that one. But this is the loft. We're 25 feet wide and I think 21 feet, 22 feet deep. So it's almost, almost a square. It's just a little bit shorter this way than it is wide. And I've, I've really never used this area up here for much other than storage. We got my Christmas tree and then just some stuff from the house. Overflow from the house up here tractor seats not a bunch of anything really but um, give you a perspective here and we get back against the wall but there's a lot of room up here you know even getting over as far as I can and not hit my head it's a good bit of room good bit of room That's my Jeep seat. What else? There's not really much else I can tell you about up here. The mud daubers like it up here. Uh, also, I have bats up here. And then up here, and yeah, I've even brought a flashlight. The uh, birds like to nest, so they nest there. And they also like to nest back in that corner. So those are areas that I've got to get uh, cleared up, cleaned up sealed up. You can see light through there, so a little bit of insulation. And I've still got some sheets of insulation. I'll have to get more. Got the pretty pink stuff. But um, the beams that I use in here are laminated beams, rafters, floor joists, whatever you want to call them. Uh, 22,000 pounds a foot. A, a foot I believe is what they were rated at. Just, I mean, absolute overkill. Um, what I will do for that last half there is just standard dimensional lumber. Uh, I will do 10 buys um, so that it's good and rigid. But you can also see over here, this area is open here on both sides. Why I originally done, did that, I have no clue. Um, but what I do plan on doing is sealing that area off as well and 
all I'll do, I'll cut pieces a little low, a little wide, because where the floor meets this beam, it's not straight through. So all I'm essentially going to do is just angle it. It's nothing, I mean, it's not space that's going to be used, so I'm just going to angle it to make it easier for me to attach it like this. That way I won't have to do a bunch of cutting and notching and fitting and, and all that kind of fun happy stuff. Uh, you can see it does not have its original roof on. It was replaced at one point. This barn was built in 1900 and they put it in with uh, actual dimensional 2 by 4 construction but it's holding up great. It's had some heller branches land on it and if you look here, you can also see it still has the original cedar shake shingles underneath of the tin roof. There is a tin roof. Here you can see part of it right here, galvanized. So it's actually got the cedar shake shingles under the metal roof. No leaks. Say 1900, it's been up 117 years. Uh, this side of the barn fares a lot better than the other side because it doesn't take the weather near as much so I don't have a lot of the shrinkage and uh, just normal damage uh, to the wood but you know you can obviously look over there see all the light coming through there that's the side of the shop that takes the heat of the sun and uh, all the beat down and whatnot so um, we'll get all that filled in. I'll probably just do a cheap and generic before I cover it with, uh, I may not even cover it with insulation. What I'll probably do is just, boy it's warm up here. <laughs> uh, what I'll probably do is just um, spray foam insulation just to cover up all the holes and cracks and whatnot up here. And then I've also got, see if we can get this in there, mice, or excuse me, birds that uh, build their nest up there as well. But, and there's something else in this shop I don't believe I've ever shown on video. So since I'm essentially giving a you know, somewhat of a tour of the shop, I'll go downstairs and uh, show you guys something neat that's in the concrete. But before I do, you see this 4x4 beam here, 4x4 beam here, and they run all the way across. I just use this for storage, and there's another light up there. A, little, a light here and a light there. Uh, initially, I had a suspended staircase, and I used it. I just didn't use it enough to warrant leaving it there. Uh, it wasn't that much of a pain to set up, but it was a whole lot quicker just to grab a ladder, set the ladder up, and come up and down that way so the staircase went by the wayside but anyway let's get downstairs and take a look at the concrete something pretty neat about it I want to show you guys hang on all right we're back downstairs let me show you like I said this shop was built in 1900 Deer, deer, deer. There are literally deer prints all over the place in the concrete. There's some more. All over the place in here. And there were either dog or coyote prints as well. I don't remember offhand where they're at, but here's another one. But pretty, uh, pretty interesting, and be neat to know the uh, the whole story. You know, if this barn could talk, kind of thing. You can hear how much noisier, excuse me, this heater is than 
the one that I took care of the motor on. It's got a buzz somewhere. Sounds like it's just in this fan guard right here. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll call that good for now. There are a couple things I want to do out here, not really video worthy. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. This is it, later. Bye.